we're coming to the end of our little Baja excursion, first leg of our trip. We're a few minutes away from the ferry and we're gonna load up the rigs and relax for about eight hours. We're going through the night, we're gonna sleep on some hopefully nice beds. After 10 days in the Baja, our ferry schedule dictated that we arrive in the evening. The non-drivers were allowed to board right away, while the drivers Jeff, Kyle, and I backed the rigs into the very bottom of the ship. And I will have to say that there is something very adventurous about this whole ferry experience. It's something pretty cool to do. The ship was something out of a Wes Anderson film, kind of charming but odd. All of us are looking forward to a nice bed, a shower, and a night outside the tent. But we have to find our cabin first. down in the belly of this beast. Looks like we get to close out the Baja portion of this, this adventure. It's crazy, we're going over to mainland Mexico and then all the countries that are coming up next, it just feels like the unknown, almost in so many ways. Like, I don't know what we're getting ourselves into. The culture's gonna be a lot different. Even mainland Mexico's gonna be totally different than Baja. Still early at 7.50 in the morning, 7.45. We've got a lot of day ahead of us. Again, I want to emphasize and re-emphasize that um, anytime anybody has the hair stand up on the back of your neck, call it out. That's really important and probably going to be one of the one of the most important things in this next stretch of the trip. To head south meant that we had to travel on one of the many toll roads ahead. There's definitely a shift in the feeling to mainland Mexico. It has a different vibe. The roads are more structured, military checkpoints are frequent, and the overall atmosphere is heavier. We fuel our trucks at night if possible before making camp. And this stop was a bit interesting. <laughs> this, this one's laughing at me because she, she hit my butt. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yes, see. No. <laughs> she got a little frisky with me. Just out of nowhere, she came up. A little playful. smack, a little smack. Yeah, playful around here. Yeah, it got a little playful. It must be, it must be the rain. Yeah. <laughs> so as we've been feeling here, uh, we had a local come up and like adamantly roll down the window, come here, talk to me, and give us some intel on some drug activity that's happening in a state that's about five hours from here. And he was just adamant and saying, hey, do not go here. It's, there's drug war happening here, but it's just confirmation to have Locals come in and want to help you and say, hey, don't go into these areas, there's harm there. And you'll find that as you travel around the world, that these people will come out of the woodworks like that, that do want to help you, and that the world is generally a good place with good people. Uh, you just got to be smart about it and listen to good advice when it comes. The rain was incredible. The incredible home. It's a welcomed feeling to need your jacket after so many days of heat. It's just that good. <laughs> As we set up camp and pay for the site, Ty and Toby mingle with some locals and score a great opportunity. He asked us, what are you guys doing? So I told Phil and then he's like, yeah, I think I've heard of you guys. He said, come on down, we're having a family reunion, we're having a carne asada, come on down. I was like, oh, you guys are sweet. Thank We're going to eat you guys out of house and home. <laughs> I will eat that right now. I will go eat your family dinner. <laughs> Come to find out, they had some pretty interesting history, too. O'Connor. They are Spanish O'Connors, and they are Irish. That's, this area was settled by the Irish. Unless they're, like, completely filling me full of, like, a giant goat. He said, so they choose their family union somewhere along this area, like San Blas along this coast, because it was settled by the Irish. We have family that comes from... Other parts of Mexico. The reunion was full of life, and the O'Connors took us in like family. The grill was the rim of an old Toyota truck, and they told us it's very reliable and never breaks down. Um, you 
your carne asada, and then you put a little bit of salsa. Light salsa. Not salsa, light yeah. salsa. Yeah, oh, yeah, this one. Gringo. Okay, and go ahead. Enjoy your burrito. All right. Okay? Oh, this is yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, my God. Thank you. Amazing. So far, best taco in Mexico is a crash family reunion. They made us feel like a million bucks. That is so good. And it was great because it made us feel and think a little differently about the people and the place of mainland Mexico. So as an overlander, this is what you live for. Coming into an area that you thought you were just going to camp at and crash and get up in the morning, and then you end up at a party with all these great locals cooking you food, telling you about culture. It's as good as it gets. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Ah, I got it. I got it. Yeah. yeah. And tomorrow morning we will go by to. Yeah, come say yeah. hi. Yeah. Okay. okay. Please do. Please Please do. Us, uh, <laughs> yeah. Good morning. When is the yes? What's the oh the phone I could do this the rest of my life. These people are so sweet, so kind, and this is, this is specifically what I remember about this area of Mexico. The kids always want to play with you, and they, they're curious. And just, it just blesses my heart to be able to spend some time with people that are, that are from around here and get to see the culture, and, and they're, they have been incredibly inviting. It's like we're part of the family here, which has been amazing. Got it. Tio <laughs> We made some time to hang around and took a walk down to the local market. Ty and Jeff found some local fruit that they just had to try. I've never tasted it. They told us, see, we have a couple other guys with us that have tasted it and they said you need to go get one. But we got told by, by some other people that are staying at Paradiso to come down and grab jackfruit. Scott and I were introduced to jackfruit in Uganda and we had no idea that you could get it here in central Mexico. Very good. Oh, you have them right here? Oh, good. How long did it take that to grow? Like three months. Yeah. Wait a minute. We can open that one at camp. Now that I watched you do it, we can open that one. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yo, yeah. Connor said know. that eating the jackfruit is uh, like taking 10 Viagra. Oh. <laughs> we may save this till the very end of our trip. <laughs> there are two things to note about jackfruit. One, it is incredibly sticky, and one should put olive oil all over your hands and utensils before trying to cut it open. Tangerine, a mango, apricot, or apricot, or pear, apricot. Or apricot. Or apricot. Yeah, but none of those are an aphrodisiac. So. Some hint of banana too. Jack and two, it has a very strong smell, and after two days in the fridge, you will regret taking it with you. Trust us on that one. It's noon. We've been hanging out here uh, for quite a while, just because it's so nice. But it's now time to move on. We've got to make it to Guadalajara tonight. We're probably gonna camp up in a hotel uh, for security reasons, and we're just gonna be busting across uh, the lower part of Mexico for the next couple days. We've also been warned about quite a bit of drug activity and drug war stuff happening in this area as well. So there is really just no reason for us to spend a lot of time down here. So it's a four hour push today, and then a big push tomorrow to get over to the Yucatan. The areas we have to travel through are relatively safe on the main road system. It's when you get into the more rural areas of the states of Zacatecas, Michoacan, Guerrero, and Oaxaca. We made it across this region in two hard days of travel. And take the U.S. travel warnings with a grain of salt. If you follow them to the letter, you will never leave your driveway. Finally, we rolled into the Palenque area, and that night, after falling asleep, the jungle became haunted with one of the scariest sounds any of us have ever heard. Let's 
skin tired and all of a sudden all hell broke loose behind me all through the trees was were demons in samurai warrior suits standing on top of the trees screaming at me and all the guys were completely snored out sleeping try to wake up Ty and Kurt and they wouldn't wake up and so I'm like I'm not the only person hearing these people so finally wake up Kurt Oh, those are just howler monkeys. I had never heard a howler monkey. It's not a howl, it's a snarl, a hellish snarl. And so I had a really hard time going to sleep last night because these things were going nuts. With an early start, we loaded up to head into the Palenque ruin site. The Mayan ruins that you have in your mind of the, you know, Indiana Jones and all that stuff, it, they're kind of, unless you know someone who knows of something way deep and lost in the back jungle, they're not, easily found. The Palenque Mayan ruins were occupied as early as 500 BC and thrived between 600 and 700 AD. Its ancient name was Lakma, or Big Water, and the city held a great deal of political power in the area. Ancient Mayan rulers would come to this place to discuss matters of the Mayan world, and is the only known Mayan city to ever have women rulers. Being here gave us great context into Mayan history, and now we wanted to go find some other ruins that most people never see. So we hooked up with a native guide to get us into the good stuff. He took us into some steep and thick jungle. The heat was intense and the humidity pegged to 100%. Slightly more humidity. Not so much humidity. the heat, but the gosh darn humidity. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting here just a sweating. Feels good, you know? I feel like I'm glowing. Even our guide acknowledged the heat, <laughs> which made all of us gringos feel a little better. <laughs> He told us how the ruins have lasted for so long. It comes down to the plaster that they used on the outside of the walls. To, to boil it one ton of this limestone, the Maya used to use between five or six tons of firewood. So this place, the only Palenque place, is uh, 20 square kilometers. This is a huge city. It was a huge city. So uh, could you imagine how many trees was put to build all this city? It's a common theory that the Mayans overforested the area, and that's what ultimately caused the fall of the empire. Channeling our inner Indiana Jones, we stepped up into the dark halls of the ruin. This was about to separate the men from the boys. The cave was full of humongous, lethal spiders. Look at that thing. Look at that thing. Look at that thing. That thing is, he's dead. Yeah, right? No, he's not. Take a look at the other one over here. The Stop. Cover. Stop it. No. Oh, oh. There's another one. <laughs> the spider, it's... Goo! That's a big spider. Dr. Jones. <laughs> Sounds like we're stepping on fortune cookies. <laughs> we're not, like, on a normal tour at all, <laughs> where people go. We're friggin' in a Mayan ruin, way up in the mountains. But that huge spider right there. Soon the biggest spider any of us had ever seen shook the rest of us out of the Temple of Doom. Did you see that thing? He just went, where is it? Where is it? He's He's the corner. Corner. Jeff decided he needed to kill it. And we all thought it was a good idea. And told him that we would wait outside. Ty gave Jeff moral support, and Scott filmed with Black nerves of steel. We came in here thinking we only had one live spider, and there's two, one up on that ledge where my light is, and there's one around the corner. Oh my god. Okay, okay, we gotta Outside, we listened anxiously to the kill squad within. <laughs> I'm so scared right now. <laughs> oh, he just moved around. Scoob! Oh, Jesus. Oh, help me, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I also don't feel good about this. <laughs> I need a bigger life. Ready? <laughs> Did you do it? Stand up. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. Oh my gosh! Oh, Toby, sir. Toby! Wow, look at that thing! Let's get into the light. Examine this thing. This thing screwed around. Yep, he did. And Ty and I had a heart attack. 
<laughs> and then he stopped it. I finally got him. <laughs> oh, I hate every part of the oh, whole Look at that thing. Jiggle, jiggle. I feel like crying. <laughs> We had had enough spiders for one day. So we hiked a couple kilometers back to the trucks to find somewhere to cool off. It was exactly what we needed to boost our spirits from the day's draining heat. At camp, we prepared for another travel day ahead by doing some laundry and eating a good meal before racking out. The next morning on our way out, we came across some hitchhikers. We just passed these hitchhikers that we saw yesterday at the falls. They just happened to be two really cute girls and I'm a single guy. So you know, why not pick them up? So we've got room in Apollo here. I'm gonna jump in the back seat. And <laughs> this is something we've been working on. Back seat middle. Something yeah. we've been working on this whole trip. <laughs> They've been working on Are you that. gonna sit don't... middle in the back? Back seat middle, why, feet on the hub. Why would I not, you know? Why would I not? This is cute, I um, like this. A few miles up the road, the French maidens were found again. <laughs> yeah, we can throw. You can throw your bags over the back of your shoulders there, guys. All right, all right. You sure? Okay, yeah. okay. What are you doing? We are filming a show. Yeah, what? A show. Filming a show. Okay. Yeah, yeah. you're on it. Okay. Right uh, where are you going? Right, here we, go. we are going to Oaxaca. Oh yeah, yeah. Sí. We are on our way to Panama. Yeah, so, yeah. But what kind of? Show? We let Jeff do all the talking. Uh, it's an adventure travel show. So we wanted to give him all the opportunity in the world to make a pen pal. What's that? By yourself? You do it? Yeah, you? yeah, us three vehicles. It's our own, it's our own show. Um, uh, expedition? Uh, expedition. <laughs> yeah, we live up in the mountains, kind of. It's a very beautiful area. Yeah, from the uh -huh. So you're hitchhiking all through. For the moment, almost, yeah. Another. It won't have returned tickets. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Seven, eight months, maybe yeah, yeah. one year, maybe never. <laughs> <laughs> Just gotta find a husband. I <laughs> think so. Oh, no? Husband, no. No, okay. Me being in the other car, thought that maybe he could use some help. I've joined us for this short period of the expedition. Yeah. I'd like to thank you for driving with us. <laughs> uh, we only ask that uh, a small payment be made by uh, providing a small peck on the cheek of Jeff. What? One on the left and one on the right. And I that will provide us with adequate payment for yeah. your ride today. And uh, thank you for flying with Expedition <laughs> Overland in Apollo today. Enjoy your trip. Thank, thank you. you too. I don't know what you said, but thank yeah. you. The payment being lost in translation, Jeff was going to have to settle for a picture. Perfect one, right there. Yeah. <laughs> then, as quickly as they entered Jeff's she life, it. Thank you. they were gone. And then she walked out of his life forever. Don't get hit by a car. Oh, yeah. In a small state of dismay, we headed west to find another campsite as we make our way toward Belize. We just got into Chacamol, and it was, it was more touristy than we were hoping for. And as we talked to the guys at the gate, I uh, had Kurt run up and chat with them, and... Uh, they're like, yeah, there's some cool ruins up here, uh, not too far. We'll just take you up there and show you the road to get into them, and you can camp up there at the base of the ruins. So we're just following this guy, happy as can be to show us, and uh, we'll see where this one leads. This might be exactly what we're looking for. Once on the trail, it took two seconds before someone was playing the Jurassic Park theme song. This place had the feeling that a T-Rex could drop a severed goat leg on your sunroof any second. The jungle was thick, and the trail become unused and narrow. It's getting more obstructed. It is getting more obstructed. It's starting to narrow up a little bit. So we're going to probably come off this trail with a little bit of pinstriping, but that's okay. That's what the vehicles are for. 
No one has been in here for a long time. It's time for redemption. The Kenzie Trail flashbacks are buzzing through my head right now. Just gotta get my pants on. What was my first mistake at the Kenzie Trail? I had shorts on. So, are you guys wanting to, uh, it's just turned into a single track? Like, there hasn't been a vehicle in here for a long time. Um, so I think what we'll do is just have somebody run ahead. If you guys just want to hang tight here, we'll run maybe half a mile up or something. We're going to do some winching. We've got some downfall trees in the road ahead, probably a little more than we're going to handle with our saws. So we're simply going to set up a winch point over in the trees off to our left here, use the snatch block to redirect the winch pole, grab it from the far right corner, and slide them out of our way and get moving up the trail. stragglers we got to cut out but uh, that's, that, it works so well set up a snatch block off a tree off somewhere else you got obviously we have hundreds of trees on the side of the road to utilize which is really nice because sometimes you're really looking for a snatch block and you don't have it so we're able to utilize that and I think we're gonna have to do it up here as well the day was getting hot really hot 102 degrees reads on the Tacoma's thermometer but the work was worth it to be reaching for what seemed like a hidden treasure deep in the jungle. In some ways, this trail was similar to our time on the McKinsey Trail in British Columbia, but the heat and humidity definitely makes this trail a different challenge. We were going through gallons of water clearing the trail. But the effort was worth it as we started to see signs of ruins. And that hill right there is a temple. So this is not an everyday occurrence, it's pretty awesome. That mound of trees is an old ruin and we're gonna go climb to the top. We located the temple stairs which had almost completely been overtaken by the jungle and we climbed our way to its top. You can see miles and miles around you to the horizon. And this is all, I mean, this is kind of rolling hills through all of here, but uh, it's pretty flat otherwise. So what a great vantage point for civilization to look out, to look at their land and be able to keep watch on things amongst, you know, all of their other religious stuff they did here, but. What in an amazing day. Hard work found us great reward. We picked out a suitable area within the ruins and cleared the brush to make camp. This place was straight out of fairy tales. We sat together, lost in the romance of adventure. This place and all its mystery provided a momentary cure to wanderlust. Yeah, I just need to keep in mind is that adventure will happen. We just have to let it.